This video will cover a few important things you should know before you start the labs for the electronics project. What is a printed circuit board? A printed circuit board, or PCB, is the most common method of mechanically mounting and electrically connecting components. They are found in almost all electronic devices. Components are mounted on a piece of non-conductive material and are connected by conductive tracks and pads. Solder is used to fix the components to the PCB. Details of how PCBs are designed and fabricated will be covered in the PCB CAD lab and the corresponding PCB lecture. You will learn how to solder components onto a PCB during the electrical assembly labs. For further information about how to solder, please see the basic soldering technique video available on YouTube and Blackboard. What is a schematic diagram? A schematic diagram, or circuit diagram, is an abstract symbolic representation of a circuit. It shows how all of the components are connected together electrically. However, it does not show how they are connected together physically. Each type of component has a standard symbol. A list of common component symbols can be found at the back of the lab booklet. Schematics include information about the values of components and their designators. This is part of the schematic diagram for the I.O. board you'll be constructing during the electrical assembly labs. You can see that each of the components has a label identifying it, which corresponds to the components list in the lab booklet, along with the component value where appropriate. For example, this component here is resistor R9 and has a value of 10,000 ohms. Further details about how to read schematic diagrams will be covered in the schematics and datasheets lecture. What is a placement or routing diagram? A placement diagram is a physical representation of a circuit and shows where all of the components are placed on the PCB. This is the placement diagram for the I.O. board. As you can see, it shows the location of each of the resistors, capacitors and other components which corresponds to their exact location on the printed circuit board. If the diagram also shows the tracks which provide the electrical connections, it is known as a routing diagram. This is the routing diagram for the top layer of the I.O. board. The component designators correspond to those found on the matching schematic diagram. How do I know what value a resistor is? There are two methods of resistor value labelling, colour codes and numbers. Regardless of the method, when you write down the value of a resistor, it is best to avoid using decimal points, as they can often be misinterpreted. Letters are used instead, R, K and M, to denote multipliers of 1, 1000 and 1 million. For example, a 330 ohm resistor would be written as 330R. A 4700 ohm resistor would be written as 4K7 and an 8.2 mega ohm resistor would be written as 8M2. Nearly all individual through hole resistors have a set of coloured bands on them. The colour of the bands corresponds to a number. By combining these numbers in a specific manner, you can find the value of the resistor. For a four band resistor, the first two colours represent significant figures, the third is a multiplier and the fourth is the tolerance. For a five band resistor, the first three colours are significant figures, the fourth is a multiplier and the fifth is the tolerance. You do not need to memorise the colour chart. These will either be provided in paper form or you can use an app. There are many apps available to help electronic engineers. For Android users, ElectroDroid is a good app and for iOS users, Electronics Engineering Toolkit can be used. Other apps are also available. Let's look at some examples. This is a four band resistor. The first two bands represent significant figures, in this case yellow and purple. The third band is orange, which means that we have to add three zeros at the end or multiply by a thousand. If we put these colours into ElectroDroid, yellow, purple, orange, we can see that the resistor has a value of 47,000 ohms, or 47K. The last band is gold, which means that it has a tolerance of 5%. Tolerance
Tolerances will be covered during the discrete components lecture. This is a five band resistor. So the first three colors represent significant figures. In this case, orange, orange, and black. The fourth band is the multiplier, in this case, red. So we multiply by 100. Putting this into the app, orange, orange, black, red, shows that we have a resistor with a value of 33 kilo ohms. The tolerance band was brown, which gives a tolerance of 1%. Reading colour codes is a useful skill to have. However, it is time consuming and hard to do if you have poor eyesight or are colour blind. Most times it is best to measure the value using a multimeter. Although there are challenges doing this if the resistor is already mounted on the PCB, as will be discussed in the electrical testing lecture. Resistor networks and surface mount resistors do not use colour codes. Instead, they use numeric labels. However, the principle is still the same. For a three number code, the first two numbers are significant figures and the last is the multiplier. In this example, the resistor network has the code 472. The 4 and 7 are significant figures, and the 2 is the multiplier, or number of zeros. So the resistor value is 4700 ohms, or 4K7. How do I know what value a capacitor is? Capacitors have numeric codes on their sides, similar to resistor networks or surface mount resistors. The method of reading it is the same, except that the multiplier is relative to picofarads, or 10 to the power of minus 12, rather than farads, which is 10 to the power of 0. For example, a 102 capacitor would be 1 nanofarad. A 683 capacitor would be 68 nanofarads. The school has put together a number of video tutorials to help learn about the practical equipment you will be using during your practical work in the school. These are available on the FSE eLearning website and Blackboard, and they can also be accessed using the QR codes attached to the lab benches.